Guys, thanks for hosting this webinar and having me on. My name is Mark Pews. I'm a territory sales manager for Avid. Uh, I'm also arguably one of those storage specialists. Um, and Nexus is a, a passion of mine. Storage for media in general is a passion of mine. And so I wanted to do a, a quick intro into what Michael is going to be showing here um, with his overview of our management console. First things I like to do is kind of dispel some myths uh, and make sure people understand what Nexus is. And I say Nexus is a media optimized, durable, software defined scale out storage that provides fast and consistent connectivity to media users while making admins life easier and enabling collaboration. That's a mouthful and quite a lot. Um, basically understand that it's quick, it's easy to use. And those are kind of the things we're going to try and show off today. What it's not, it's not only for Avid houses. And that's a, a big thing that I had to learn uh, coming from different storage vendors and, and different manufacturers. Uh, it's not crazy expensive. Uh, it's very competitive. It's not difficult to use and it doesn't silo your data just to just Avid workflows. So seven reasons to consider Nexus. Uh, as I said, it's optimized for media workflows. It's fast, it's predictable, it's highly scalable, it's resilient, it's easy to use and it's flexible. I would say that Avid is the only enterprise grade storage manufacturer that's completely focused on media and entertainment. Uh, there are a lot of other great uh, manufacturers out there that do uh, awesome jobs with storage, uh, but there's some features that uh, Avid puts into their uh, secret sauce, if you will, that makes them really just a, a notch above. And it's why I ended up coming here. Uh, we can talk about that later through the Q&A session. I'm one of the panelists, so you know, feel free to, to hit me with any questions you guys might have. But right now, I think what we're really going to show mostly uh, is how easy to use the interface is and how flexible it is. Uh, and I think you guys will be able to see how scalable it is as well. So I'm going to hand it off to Michael. I'm going to stop sharing. Uh, Mr. Krulik, if you'd like to take it away, you're uh, most welcome, sir. Thank you so much. That's so formal, Mr. Krulik. Uh, thank you so much, Mark. That was a great intro to Avid Nexus. By the way, if you didn't know, Nexus stands for the next generation intelligent storage. Thank you, Keycode, for hosting today's event. I'm Michael Krulik, and I'll be taking you through the management console for Avid Nexus. Now, there are many Nexus configurations available to suit your storage needs, but the ease of how you set it up and maintain it is key to a really great experience. Now, it doesn't matter if you're an all Avid facility, all Adobe, Apple, or Blackmagic, a combination of all of these, or even have Autodesk in your workflow, they are all supported platforms on Avid Nexus. Now I'm in Burbank and I'm using a web browser to log into the Avid Nexus at our corporate headquarters in Burlington, Massachusetts. So you can monitor and manage your Nexus from anywhere. We're currently taking a look at the Avid Nexus dashboard, which at a glance gives me a look at who's connected to my Avid Nexus system. What is the client bandwidth? You can actually dictate who has what sort of bandwidth connected to the Avid system, depending on their role. You can see things like the version of Avid Nexus that you have. Any of these panels can also be blown up a little larger if you just choose the little icon in the upper right hand corner. Or again, you can get an overall look here. Now I am taking a look at the current system, my Nexus system. I do have uh, an I do have a selection here for cloud, and these are the Avid Nexus cloud spaces. By subscription, you can set up to have cloud workspaces where you can, you can have Nexus cloud spaces where you can upload high-res files or projects, offloading them from your current system to free up space. And again, that's something that you can set up, and once it's activated, you have access to that dashboard as well to see how much storage is being used. Again, just a really nice, clean UI. Now down the left-hand side here, we have access to system information, we have access to storage, monitoring tools, setting up users, and also looking at logs of the Avid Nexus system. And we're gonna take a look at a portion of this. Again, under system, we're looking at the dashboard. Under the bandwidth limits, this is where you can actually see and set up bandwidth depending on what any role, depending on what every user has. Maybe there are some users who don't need complete bandwidth to be pulled from the rest of the system. You can decide who has what bandwidth connected to Avid Nexus. The installers here is nice because it's easy to go in and set up a client to your Avid Nexus system. You just plug in a network cable to the Nexus. 
You go to the local IP address or the host IP address for your Nexus. You have access to the Avid Nexus clients right here, whether it's Windows, Mac, Linux, whatever you need. You download the software and in a matter of minutes, you're connected and up and running. Other things like you know system setup, this is where you're installing your chassis. You can currently see that I have three Nexus E2 chassis set up on the system and a system director. Depending on how many clients you have, depending on your storage, this is where you'll get an overall look as to all of the chassis that are connected to your Nexus system and also how you install them to be configured together. Well, the main thing I wanna show you here is how you set up your storage and your workspaces. First thing I want to point out are your media packs. Now every chassis has a media pack. A media pack is 10 drives. Each media pack is set up depending on the storage that you have purchased. You have the controllers. The controller is the heart of every chassis. That is your motherboard. That's how you connect to other Nexus chassis in your configuration. An important part to your Nexus configuration are your workspaces. And a workspace is how you're dividing up your overall storage depending on how you want to use it. Do you want to have workspaces for just Adobe projects and media? Do you want to have wor uh, workspaces for just graphics? Do you want to have workspaces for just Avid projects or workspaces for VFX and finishing? You can set that up depending on how you want to work. You're currently seeing that there are 34 workspaces set up on this Avid Nexus in Burlington. You can take a look and see things like, you know, the capacity. You can set up any sort of mirroring and protection where you can decide per workspace how much protection you want to have over your media. If I go in and take a look at this workspace right here, I double click. We do get an overall snapshot of that workspace where we can see how much storage is being taken up. We see the values right here. We can also see here what users have access to read, write, or even not see that workspace. And we can also dynamically reallocate any sort of storage here. So if you define a certain amount of storage, I could go in and add or take away storage at any time just by moving the slider here. But let's go ahead and start by creating a workspace just to show you how easy that is. We hit add. I'm gonna create a brand new workspace. I'm gonna call that workspace media two. This is where we can decide how much protection we want to have on our workspace. We want to have it totally mirrored or do you want to do single disk or dual disk protection. That again is decided per workspace which is great. We can also go in we can choose how large we want to make that workspace. Let's decide on 100 gigs. It does give us how much storage we do have available here. We can also go in and choose to send sort of any sort of signal or warning if there's an error on this workspace or even if maybe the storage is getting down to maybe 10% or even decide on un unused gigs. You can decide where you want your warning to be triggered. And that's just a little warning that's gonna come up on the dashboard. You'll also see when I scroll down here, this is where we can set up by users who has the ability to read, write, or even not see that workspace at all. So I'm gonna to go to my user right here. I'm gonna select myself, and I'm gonna give myself read and write access to this workspace. So currently, I'm the only person who can see the workspace media too. We'll select save, and that's done. And that is now set up. Again, I mentioned being able to reallocate the storage. So at any time, I could go in and add storage or take away storage to any workspace that I have access to. Again, I'm the administrator, so I have access to everything. But let's go in and set up a new user and decide if they have access to go in and resize workspaces. So under the users portion here, you'll see all of the users. There's currently 36 users. Let's go ahead and add a new user here. And let's add Henry here as a user. We'll give Henry a password. And you'll see here that I can also choose if I want Henry to be able to resize that workspace. We'll go ahead and say sure. You'll see here that there are also groups. 
Let's say you have a series of users who maybe are producers or, or assistants or editors or, um, or VFX. You can go in and add users to specific groups and then decide per group who has access to a workspace. But Henry here, he can resize. We're just going to go in and say that he can take a look at this, the workspace that I just created, Media 2. Let's say maybe uh, the projects here and also the linked and media that we have access to. And maybe some, and the Premiere workspace. So we've set Henry up with a password certain workspaces. I hit save and Henry is now a user. So let's log out of the management console from the administrator. We'll log in as Henry. We'll type in Henry's secret password of Avid. And you'll see that Henry has access to the dashboard but not all of the administrator controls down the left hand side here. Henry can go in and install clients, and Henry has access to the workspaces. But look, he only has access to the five that I gave him access to. He has no control over the other ones. But if I go to Media 2, he can go in and resize that workspace at any time. If I didn't give him access, he could take a look at this information, but would have no access to be able to resize. So just want to do a quick highlight of the Avid Nexus Management Console, being able to go in and take a look at the dashboard, get a quick glance at the information there, set up storage space, set up workspaces, set up the users, and just an overall look. And again, this is done if you're using Adobe, if you're using Blackmagic, if you're using Avid, or have Autodesk in the mix there as well. It's all the same management console to be able to control that. It's just choosing how you want to customize your Avid Nexus storage system to your storage needs. Okay, at this point, we're going to hand it back to Keycode for the Q&A.